Hi, my name's Jodie and I'm here at the QUT Nursing Clinical Practice Facility and I'm going to demonstrate using the equipment in front of me how to draw up an insulin infusion for our patient. Now out on clinical practice you'll be expected to be confident and competent in this skill and I'll be showing you through that along with the expectations for this when you're out on clinical practice. that you will need to draw up your insulin infusion is your label for your syringe so that everyone knows what is in there. Your Actrapid, which is a short-acting uh, ins insulin, which is 100 units per mil, and the expiry is 29.12.19 on this one. Some Alco wipes, a extension tubing to connect the syringe to your patient. You will also need a flush, so a 10 mil ampule of normal saline, checking the expiry date, and then another five to draw up your infusion, again checking the expiry date on each of those. An insulin syringe, which is in units, to draw up the insulin. A drawing up needle. 10 mil syringe for your flush. And last but not least, your 50 mil syringe for the infusion. So with putting our insulin infusion together, now for our patient, we would be doing this because of his history with diabetes um, and his current medical um, state. Before I start, I'll put some gel on or wash my hands, depending on the facility's policy on that, and start prepping my um, equipment. So my first thing is my opening my syringe to do the flush, which is just your 10 mils. Remembering to put on a drawing up needle to do that. I'll put the cap in there because I do need to pop the cap back on that. So once I've drawn up that 10 mils, and sometimes you do leave a little bit in the ampule just because of the way that it sits. We're going to get out those air bubbles because we don't want those going into our patient. We are pushing this in through the line. And once I've got that, We'll very carefully just slide that back on and just around the base clip it into place. I'll open up my 50ml syringe just to get it ready, but remember leave it in the packet so that it stays sterile on the bench. Before I open my insulin syringe, I'm just going to swab the top of the act wrapping just because it's been open in the cupboard and we don't know who's put their hands on it or what's been put next to it. Opening my insulin syringe, we need 50 units, which is right to the base here. I'm going to put that centred and then just draw back. If you've got some little air bubbles, which I do, I'm just going to take a tiny little bit more just to get rid of those and make sure that you hold on to the act rapid until everything's been finished. So I'll put that into my base as well. Just get rid of those little air bubbles and that little bit extra. Then I'll grab my 50ml syringe, pull the plunger back and put the insulin syringe straight in, injecting the insulin. That then goes straight into my sharps container. I'll now put on my drawing up needle. And something that I have mentioned, forgotten to mention is that throughout this process I have a second RN checking every step and everything that I have done as I go. As students, you can do this out on clinical practice. However, you must ensure that you have two RNs present with you, double checking everything that you do at each step. In some facilities, a double EN may be able to check that with you. Again, please practice as per policy for your facility. Now for this step, it's just a matter of drawing back 49.5 mils of normal saline, which is nice and easy for the first few. And on the last one, you'll need to be very wary and careful as you draw back that normal saline. When we go to the patient's bedside, 
depending on their history with their diabetes, uh, they and their family may need some further education as to why we're putting up an insulin infusion, how it's going to work, and then what's going to happen while that infusion is in place. So they would be hourly BGLs, uh, changes to the infusion rate depending on their BGLs, um, and how it will run and that there's nothing that they need to do with that as well because it runs itself. Just going to remove all those bubbles before or as many of them as I can. You can see there's a few tiny ones hopefully down the bottom there. Um, unfortunately they probably won't go away. But we'll do our best to get rid of most of them. They won't actually go into the patient. You'll probably change this uh, before that we get to that point. Oops. So just for our last bit, very carefully taking out down to 50 mils. So now that I've got my 50 mils is when I will then put on my line. So this is our little extension tube and it's not very long so you do need to make sure that patients are aware that they don't have a long um, piece of tubing like an IV line. So you need to find the end that will connect to our oh, wrong one, syringe. And I can't get my end off. Just be careful not to screw the needle on too tight, otherwise you have issues getting it off. And once my line's on, I'm just going to make sure that we've got rid of all those bubbles. And then very slowly prime that. And it can be a little bit tricky to follow it. And just when you see it coming out the bottom. And then I always clip it just to be on the safe side, that it doesn't continue running. I'll take one of these Alco wipes to the bedside with me and then the last step is filling out our label. So patient's name, ID and date of birth, the medication that we've put in it which is Act Rapid, uh, 50 units, volume is 49.5 mils of normal saline which gives us one unit per mil, the dilutant, date, time and our signatures for prepared and checked by. Now that will get attached to your 50ml syringe, but all machines are different, so depending on the machine will depend on how you attach that, so that you can see the name and the um, drug that's in that from the machine without having the patient's bedside. That. Everything has been double checked by our second RN, or in your student's case, two RNs, and we have written, done this up as per the orders. So we're double checking this now, so we have 50 units of Act Rapid insulin plus 49.5% oh, sorry, 49.5 mils of sodium chloride, um, and we will sign that with our buddy. I'm checking my patient's name and date of birth, so I'm asking them to tell me that, checking their UR number on their armband against the chart as well, and whether they've got any allergies. I'll also explain again the process and ask if they've got any questions and then look at putting this together. So we grab our syringe and the first thing I'm actually going to do is check the site. So is our tape, however that's been taped down, all nice and secure? Can we see any leaks, any redness of the skin? And I'll also check the J-loop and any lines going in because if there is any lines, we need to make sure that that's compatible with our insulin before we attach as well. In this case, he only has some 3% in the third running, so that is fine. I'm just going to swab this port really well to make sure that I'm not going to infect my patient and add any bacteria to his system. With my flush, I'll just make sure that I haven't got any air bubbles in there. Even though there is some fluid running, I'm still going to attach that and just push nice and slowly through about five mils. Just to make sure that it is running nicely. 
find that there's no leaks or any puffiness occurring at the site to sh tell me that that has been um, compromised. I'll just turn that off while I remove that. Then while I've got that up and nice and clean, I'm going to attach my insulin infusion. That way I don't need to reclean that. You may need some tape because as you can see it is folding over so it is handy to do that. I'll just reopen our tap and now I'm going to go to our machine and open that up. It just takes a minute to go through its little warm up procedures. This is the bee brawn. So for students here, a lot of the hospitals have this particular machine, I believe. Um, so it is one of the more popular ones that you'll come across. It just takes a minute to open itself. So we open the syringe holder and the door. And this pops just inside with the plunger sitting between this green piece and the cream of the machine. Make sure that you're not going to trap anything in the door. Pull our little lever out and sit that in place. And the machine will then calibrate to your syringe. I've just got to confirm using the arrows that I'm using a Terumo 50. So make sure you know which syringe you have. Once it's done that, it'll ask me whether I want to use the drug library or not. We always do if there is one included. Then go into whichever area. So in this case, we're just going to the general ward and I'm choosing Act Rapid because we're using an insulin infusion. Now, a lot of this information may already be there, but you need to double check. So our dose is one unit per hour, which is correct as per our order for our patient. So I'll go down to the next. We have 50 units in 50 mils, so that is correct. It's already set the rate for me, which is one mil per hour. And our VTBI, which stands for volume to be infused, needs to be added. So that is our 50 mils, because we have 50 mils in our syringe hooks. And hit OK. And that will give you the time and everything is set. So once we've done that, remember to unclamp your line and make sure that your tap is open and we hit go and it is now infusing your apparatus. So with the insulin infusion now going, it is my responsibility as the nurse for this patient to continually evaluate his condition. So in that case, it's looking at his IV site and continually checking that on a regular basis for any size of infection or leaks from the site or that the dressing is compromised. Also making sure that he understands that if he does want to go for a shower, that needs to be all covered and secured really well. Um, checking his BGL on an hourly basis as per the orders and adjusting the insulin infusion uh, depending on that BGL, ensuring that I have a second RN present when I'm doing that. So as a student, you'll need two RNs present with you if you need to change the infusion. Uh, also making sure that his knowledge and his family's knowledge if need be uh, is up to date. If they have any questions throughout the process or any concerns that we are addressing those and checking in with them at all times. Um, keeping a good regular check on also vitals, pain, any anything else that the patient may complain so of. So now that I have finished my procedure, one of the things that I like to do is look back on how I've done with that. And this is really useful, particularly when you're learning uh, and haven't done it before, is did I get all the equipment out? Did I know what I was doing? Did I feel confident in what I was doing? If not, what were those areas that I wasn't feeling confident in? And go and practice do some reading, talk to colleagues uh, or peers in regards to how you can improve that for next time. Um, is there a knowledge deficit? Was there questions for the patient that I was not able to answer or support that I wasn't able to provide and how might I improve that and be able to provide that in the future? So there's some reflective points that you can consider at the end of any procedure or any care that you've given to your patient. Um, in regards to how you performed.